time I look in here, Max for engineering. What's going on? Okay. We did the trapezoid last time, so let's see where we're at. So last time we saw the trapezoid rule, if you remember. So the way the trapezoid rule works, when you have a shape, it starts here, it starts here, and it breaks it up into uh, a shape like this. So, it's not perfect, but as we saw last time, it gives us a good estimate for the area. Do you remember the formula? It was h over 2. You remember this? F of the first one. Uh, f of the first one. Plus twice the sum of the middle ones. Plus the last one. Like this. Yeah. Now we have another formula which we're going to do today called Simpson's rule. So if you want to just write that down. formula here, for Simpson's rule, you get area is roughly h over 3, f of the first one, plus twice sum of the even ones, which I'll explain in a moment now, plus 4 times the sum of the odd ones, plus then the last one there. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, I should have. Like this one here. So, I'll explain that with a, a picture. So, let's just say this is x0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. For example. Uh, let me actually look and see which one I did for the first one. Seven, eight. Alright, so x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, x6, x7, x8, for example. Let's draw a function, um, I don't know, something like this. So the way Simpson's rule works, it's different to the trapezoid, of course. What you do is, it looks it looks similar at the beginning. You make shapes like this. But I'll explain the difference now once I draw these lines in. But instead of drawing straight lines like we did with the trapezoid, we draw a quadratic between the points. So it means that it should fit the shape better because we have a quadratic instead of a straight line. Do you understand? 
so what do I mean by even and odd? Well, fx0 is the first height, obviously, and fxn is the last height, obviously. The even ones are these heights, um, x2, x4, x6, uh, and x8. And the odd ones are these heights, x1, x3, x5, and x7 then. Now, actually, I kind of drew this a bit wrong. I realized when I was drawing my quadratic, it's not actually a quadratic between the two points like I did. That was wrong of me. Uh, it's a quadratic between the three points. So there's like a quadratic here between these three. This will be, I'll just write Q for quadratic. Then there's another one here between these three. That's a quadratic. Because uh, you need three points to make a quadratic. This one here is a quadratic. And this one here is a quadratic. So every three points makes a quadratic. Whereas with the trapezoid you need two points. With Simpson's rule you need three points to make a quadratic shape. Now there is a disadvantage. Because you need three points to make a quadratic. I couldn't draw in an extra point here. Because then I only have two points. So I'd need to have another point here. X10. To make it. In other words. The last number should be an even number, because if it finishes on an odd number like 9, then you only have two points, and you need another one to, to make the quadratic. So that's Simpson's rule. Uh, so point 1, the last one, xn, needs to be x an even number. That's it. And then um, we start counting at x0 as is normal. So. Yesterday we did x squared. Uh, how many point? How many? How many times did we break up x squared in our first example? Five, six, four. Four times, was it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. Let's do some. Let's do some other function. Uh, well, we'll do. We'll do something like um um. sine x or something, as an example of using this formula. Okay, so have you got this rule written down, Simpson's rule? Yeah. No. Huh? What's your question? Here? 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 Yeah. Why is it down there? Because I want the area from here to here. This is my question. This continues forever. I'm only looking for this piece. Is that x a considered as the x n or? Yeah. And we can put also the even. No. That gets pulled out separately. First and last are separate. You got one of those medicine pens. Where'd you get that from? Who? Yes, in the school. Yeah. Okay. Can I can can I do an example now, Miss Sharif? Yeah. No? Yep. Okay. Let's speed things along by using the calculator. So let's pick something like um let's pick something like sin x from zero to pi. Okay. And um if we're to finish on an so like for example this could be x zero, x one, x two, how many pieces will we have? Mm, two is kind of too small. 
we'll make six pieces. So we'll go x0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we'll go from x0, which is 0, to x6, which is pi. So what's the h here? Well, it'd be pi minus 0 over 6, because the n is 6. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 pieces. So this is the h here. So the h is pi <coughs> over 6. Okay, so let's make our table. x0, x1, x2, x3, x, x4, x5, x6. x0 is 0. x1, pi over 6. x2, pi over 6 plus pi over 6. 2 pi over 6, which is pi over 3. The next one will be pi over 2. The next one will be 2 pi over 3. Uh, next one will be 5 pi over 6. And then the last one here is pi. If you keep adding pi over 6 each time. So now we need to work out, um, that's the x's, so now we need to work out the f's. So the first one would be sine 0, then sine pi over 6, and so on. But I have my calculator, so let's just do this on the calculator. Mode table. Now, hang on. I want to make sure I'm in radian mode. Okay. Uh, sine alpha x starting at 0, finishing at pi and going up in <coughs> pi over 6 units. So the first one is 0, 0 0.5, 0 0.866, 1, 0 0.866, 0 0.5 and 0. So Simpson's rule says the area will equal h over 3 and then what's next? The first one which is 0 plus twice the even now the even ones would be this one and this one because I remember I said the first and the last you do it separately so that's twice 0 0.866 plus 0 0.866 plus 4 times the odd ones which would be 1, 3 and 5 so that's 0 0.5 plus 1 plus 0 0.5 finally plus the last one which is 0 So let's see what Simpson says the answer should be. So let's see. That's pi over 6 over 3 times 0 plus 2 times 0 0.866 plus 0 0.866 plus 4 times 0 0.5 plus 1 plus 0 0.5 plus 0 close and we get 2, roughly. About 2. So I would say this is roughly 2. Now let's see the exact answer. Because this is something where we can know the answer exactly. So let's see how good our answer is. If you integrate from 0 to pi sine x, 0 to pi sine x, that's minus cos x 0 to pi, yeah, which will be minus cos pi minus cos 0. Uh, that's it, isn't it? Which would be cos 0 minus cos pi, which would be 1 minus minus 1, which is 2. So it's actually exactly right, although it's not really exactly right because it should have been 2 and I got 2.0008 pretty close though 
uh, the, this answer was 2.0008. So it was a little bit too big, but that's, you know, pretty good. Yeah. Um, so Simpson's method is usually more accurate than the trapezoidal method because it uses quadratics every three points to form a curve. So that would be one quadratic, that would be another quadratic, and that would be another quadratic. But the shape of sine is like a quadratic, so it actually works very well for sine x. So, um, like in the exam, we can find the value of f of x like directly, or do you need to show it? You know, it's funny, but I answered this yesterday in class when you weren't here. Which yeah, means, which means you weren't here and you didn't watch the video. Yeah, maybe you should do that. But I'll answer your question this time because I'm such a nice guy. <laughs> In the exam, you can use your calculator to make the table, like how I did, yeah. because I have no way of knowing that you made this by a table on a calculator or you did it one by one. Do you know what I mean? So actually, if the question in the exam was use Simpson's rule to calculate this with n equals 6 then this would be full marks so I think it's a pretty good question in the exam You got this? Yeah? Please. I'd like to try and do the proof, although the proof is quite difficult. We can use a computer program to help us with the proof a little bit. Um, nearly ready there? Yeah. 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 So, do you remember yesterday in the proof? Uh, at the trapezoid rule, what we did was we first we drew uh, one piece um, A to B and then we looked at what the formula would be for one piece and then we just added them up for all the pieces. Do you remember that? Let's try and do something similar but this time instead of having um, A and B, it's A, B and C because we need three points for um, a quadratic. So we are trying to find uh, let's let's say the I don't know let's say the curve is this shape. So we're trying to find a quadratic that fits around the three points, and we want the area under the quadratic, which will be pretty close to the true answer because it's a curve shape as well. So this point here, that's F A. This one up here is F B, and then this one here is F C. No, don't relax too much. <coughs> Thanks. Uh, right, so 
what we want to do is try and find a formula for this quadratic. So this quadratic will be y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And we're trying to find the abc here. So we're trying to find the formula for the quadratic. Do you understand? Yeah. So uh, let's just uh, help get a little help with the program here. Uh, let me just mode settings and we'll make it case sensitive. Um, okay, so we have f of x, the quadratic, is ax squared plus bx plus c. This is our quadratic. We have three points on this quadratic, so we can substitute in the three points. The first point is a, f a, the second one is b, f b, and so on. Um, so, just to make the writing a little bit easier, actually, let me just, sorry. I just want to change this to a capital F. Okay, so our first point is A F A. So let me just put in A, and I get that, obviously, and that should equal to F A. No, I'm sorry, I did something wrong when I set up this program. Let me just start again. A x squared plus bx plus c. Okay, let's put in the first point. x is a. And I get that. And that should equal f a. No! Rats, I screwed it up. I'm going to have to call it a different letter because I screwed up my F. I'm going to call it G instead, okay? Oh, this is not working as well as I thought. Right, restart. Um, yeah, I want to give it letters like um, X1, Y1. How's that? x2, y2, x3, y3. Happy with that then? And we're trying to find the quadratic that goes through these three points. Okay, so first we have f x1 equals y1. That's you are a son of a gun. Hang on. I can fix this. Don't you worry. Um, input. Ah, there we go. Okay. Right, there's our first equation. There's our second equation. There's our third equation. So I have three equations. <sighs> Sorry, where's my x1 gone? x1. That's better. I would have been quicker if I just typed it. x2. Oh, now we're talking. Right, there are my three equations. Uh, this is the quadratic, where I put x1, y1 into the formula ax squared plus bx plus c. I'm trying to find the a, b, and c here. That's what I'm trying to find. Uh, the a in this example, we kind of know it's going to be negative in this picture. Um, but the way to find the a and b and c is if we put these three points in, we could find them. Do you remember when we were doing y equals mx plus c? How do we find the c? We put in a point. We can actually do the same thing to find the m if we wanted to. What? How do we find the c, Musharif? You put a point in. We could do the same thing to find the m if we wanted to. We don't. Why not? Well, because we have a formula to find the m. Yeah? 
But what I'm saying is we can put three points in to find A, B, and C. We can make these three equations. So what are we trying to solve here? What are we trying to find here? We're trying to find A, B, C. So I'll just get the program to solve this. Solve system. There are three equations, and we're trying to solve equation 1, equation 2, equation 3, and we're trying to find ABC. And it gives us this beautifully complicated formula for A, B, and C. So now we have our quadratic. Yeah, I know. Looks great, doesn't it? So we have A, we have B, and we have C. All right. Let's see if I can uh, work with this. So let me just copy out the A. I go to don't need the B right there's the A quite difficult I hope you agree let's get out the B this is the B And then finally, let's get the C. The program solved it for me. The program gave me the answer from solving the three equations. So my quadratic is going to be A x squared plus B x plus C. So this is my quadratic. Pretty big quadratic. But although this looks very complicated, remember this is just a A, this is just a B, this is just a C. So now that I have my quadratic, I can integrate it, and then I should get a formula for the area here. So let me just uh, clean this up a little bit. Right, so we're integrating from A to C, simplify, and we get this, which I know looks quite a bit messy. But also, there is another thing which I've not used as well. This point x2, it should be in the middle of x1 and x3. So x2 should always be in the middle of x1 and x3. So let's see if it can simplify a bit more if I replace x2 with x1 plus x3 over 2. It simplifies. But, uh, not too much, no. Okay, I guess even with using the program's help, this proof is quite hard. I tried to prove it last year without the program, and I failed terribly. I thought with the program's help it would be easier, but it turns out the proof is quite difficult. So, I'm sorry, I know this will disappoint you, but I can't give you the proof of Simpson's rule. <laughs> you'll, just, you'll just have to take my word for it that the, the rule is... Where's it gone? That. I hope I've earned your trust at this point. There is another way to prove it, but unfortunately the method is not something on the course, so that wouldn't help either. Um, let's use Excel now like we did yesterday to see how good the Simpsons rule can be. Every year I keep trying to prove it and every year it doesn't work. It's always next year. but. I need to think of a very smart and easy way to prove it, but I don't think there is one. Ah, uh, yeah. I would have to give it more thought, though. <laughs> okay. Um, what will we integrate? Um, will we do sine x again? Or maybe we'll do something else. Hmm? Yesterday we did 
e to the minus x. Um, let's do sine x. I don't really want to do x squared because x squared is already a quadratic and Simpson rule uses quadratics. So I think the answer will be too good. Um, I'm just checking something here. Yeah, I think it's already in radian mode. Um, okay, let's have a look here. So let's look at sine x and we'll go with 100 points like last time. And we'll do 0 to pi as well. So the h is pi, which I think I can do it like this in Excel, over 100. So it's quite a small number. Uh, this is xn. So it starts off with 0, and then it will increase by this much each time. So that's the next one. And where should it finish at the end? No, no, this is the x. Pi. Pi, yeah. So what should be the number at the end here? Yeah. Which it is. Okay. Now, uh, let me just move this over. Okay, now let's calculate the f, which is sine of the x. And that should finish at zero, which it does practically. Okay. That's, the zi that's nearly zero at the end. 10 to the minus 15. I can read. Um, okay, now the slight problem here, let me put in some more spaces. Simpson's rule is a little bit harder to type because yesterday we just had first and last and twice the middle, whereas for Simpson's rule it's first, last, twice, twice the evens and four times the odds. So what I'll do is... Um, I'll forget about the first one and I'll do the evens first. So the first even is 2 and the next even is 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull the evens out by themselves. Uh, that didn't quite work. Let me try again. That's better. So you can see now only the evens have been pulled out. So here it's 4 times the sum of all of these. And this I'll put in the first plus the last as well. And then the next one is... Um, oh wait, this one was 2 times, wasn't it? Sorry. Yeah, and the nec next one is 4 times. Isn't that it? No, 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 thank you. I shouldn't include the last one. Uh, this is two times the evens, isn't it? Uh, yes. I didn't include the zero yet. And now we need the odds pulled out. Good, so 98, 97, 95, these are all the odd ones, and it's four times those. Yeah? Okay, and Simpson's rule says it's equal to H, where's my H gone? All the way over here. 
h over tray times um, first plus the last plus twice the evens plus four times the odds. So the answer should be even closer to two, we hope. Let's see. Mm, nice. Practically two. So again, Simpson's rule gives us a very close answer. Yeah. But what's nice about now that I have my spreadsheet, I could change my function. So like for example, I could do 0 to pi e to the x, for example. So if I was just to change my function here, instead of having sine, have a different function like exponential, and copy it down. Now I get a different answer because now I'm integrating 0 to pi dx, which we know that would be e pi, well it'd be ex from 0 to pi, so that's e pi minus e0. Can we just hit that in on the calculator? Let's see what we get. e pi minus e0, which is 1. And that's 22.14. And when I look at my spreadsheet, I get 22.14. You see, so it's, it's a very, very nice way to integrate very accurately. And it, once you make the spreadsheet, um, it's not so difficult to change it for different functions. And this is part of what you'll need to do for your coursework. Um, I want you to look at some function by trapezoid and by Simpson's rule and to compare them and to see which one is better when you have a small number or if you have a large number. Okay, let's have a look at what we have here. So, just like yesterday, again, I want you to use Simpson's rule to integrate these. And I think what I'll do is, after you practice a couple of these, we'll have a look at your coursework on Moodle then. I'll put it up on the screen. So we'll have a look at what you have to do then for your coursework. Yeah. And I'll give you two weeks, but I don't count holidays during the time. So if I actually give it to you like on Friday, then you actually have three weeks because the holiday time doesn't count when I give you two week assignment. So you have three weeks to do it then basically, which I think is plenty of time because your physics should be finished or nearly finished by now, right? I I know you didn't, because I didn't give you feedback yet. Why? Look at me, I'm so busy and I'm so sick and I'm so tired. I tend to do nothing. Yeah, did I tell you when I would reply? No. But I want you to reply before the break so I can answer. Did I tell you I would? Yes. <laughs> is it still before the break? No. Is, it still, is this the break? No. No, is it still before the break? Yeah. Yeah, yeah but... But what? Two days. Before the break, yeah. I still have two days to reply. Please reply to me before Friday. Like, today or Didn't I say I would reply before the break? Yes. Yeah. Yes, and Friday is before the break. No, but if you reply Friday, I can't ask you because I want to look at it. So. You should reply on Friday. Yeah, <laughs> Five o'clock. <laughs> when I'm on the bus. <laughs> Send. <laughs> I'll do my best. The thing is, tomorrow there's no classes. No, Listen, tomorrow there's no classes. So if you get drafts into me tonight, then tomorrow when we're at the university talks, you'll probably see me sitting on the back of my laptop looking at your reports. Okay? So if you want something soon, tomorrow you'll get, if you send it to me today, you get a reply tomorrow because I have no classes, so I'll have time to read it, okay? But I'm very busy and sick, so I'll have to wait till tomorrow. So, our coursework will start from this week, or...? Which coursework? The next. Well, we have three weeks from... You have three weeks to do it. And no. now that I've completed this lesson, you actually have enough to start it today if you wanted to.
but this is why I was asking if you had your laptop. But in fact, for the very beginning, you don't need your laptop. You can just use your calculator. Anyways, try these for a few minutes. Make sure you can use Simpson's rule, and then we'll have a look at the coursework. Okay.